Hello, my name is Dr. Rashad Pasik, and I welcome you again to this joint venture between Gyrus ACMI and OBGYN Net on office and operative hysteroscopy. Hello, my name is Dr. Patrick Young. I will be discussing the setup, equipment, and management of the resectoscope. Unlike office hysteroscopy, the resectoscope must be performed in the operating room. Use of the resectoscope allows complex intrauterine procedures to be performed, including endometrial resection, endometrial ablation, and hysteroscopic polypectomy or myomectomy. The basic setup includes an open bivalve or weighted speculum, a single tooth tenaculum, and a ring forceps with sponge to apply a cleansing solution such as iodine. The setup for the resectoscope is more involved than the standard hysteroscope especially with regards to the equipment and the fluid management system. The resectoscope is comprised of five parts. The working element is the backbone of the resectoscope. It is called an iglesias type element and allows for one-handed operation. The telescope may have a 12 degree or 30 degree lens depending on the manufacturer. An inner sheath that is placed around the working element and connected to an outer sheath. The continuous flow outer sheath has an inflow and an outflow stopcock. There are outflow holes located on the distal end of the sheath. The inflow is attached to the inflow stopcock, which is usually the valve closest to the lens and may be identified by an arrow pointing toward the scope. The outflow stopcock may be identified by an arrow pointing away from the scope and drains into a collection bag or to suction. It is a good idea to close all the valves until the instrument is ready to be used and to prime the inflow before beginning the procedure. Finally, there are electrodes which are connected to a power source. There are a variety of electrodes for the resectoscope, both unipolar and bipolar. Unipolar electrodes include wire loops, roller balls, and roller bars. Assembly of the resectoscope starts by placing the working element over the telescope. A lock and groove mechanism can be secured when the lines match up. Next, the electrode is placed into the working element and secured around the telescope. The inner sheath is then placed over the assembly. Lastly, the outer sheath is placed and secured. Fluid management systems are an important part of the resectoscope setup. They provide adjustable continuous pressurized irrigation and suction. A typical fluid management system, like the Dolphin, has a fluid input and fluid output, which allows the precise calculation of the fluid deficit. Monitoring the fluid deficit is important to avoid complications of volume overload like hyponatremia. It is important to be aware that once fluid enters the uterine cavity, it is lost in one of three places. It may be lost out through the fallopian tube if the fluid input pressure exceeds 70 millimeters of mercury. This fluid enters the peritoneal cavity and will eventually be absorbed. Or it may enter the vascular system more directly through vessels in the uterine muscle in a process called intravasation. Techniques which have been used to decrease the amount of fluid lost to the cervix include the Gimpelson tenaculum or an endoloop which provides a good seal of the cervix around the resectoscope. A quick review of the energy and electrical circuits is necessary. In monopolar circuits, the current leaves the operating electrode and is transmitted through the tissue to a grounding electrode. A bipolar circuit is one that does not require a grounding electrode, since the current passes from one electrode through the tissue and directly to the adjacent return electrode. The choice of fluid distension media is crucial depending on whether monopolar or bipolar energy is used, and it is important to be familiar with the properties of each type of energy. The ideal fluid media is one that is isotonic, non-hemolytic, non-toxic, non-allergenic, rapidly cleared, and which allows ample visualization when operating. Electrolyte-free media are used with monopolar energy and include glycine, sorbitol, and mannitol. Because they are electrolyte-free, they do not disperse electricity, thereby allowing electrical power to be delivered via the electrode to the intended tissue. These media are all hypotonic and hypoosmolar and thereby carry a risk of hyponatremia with intravasation. Glycine has the greatest risk for hyponatremia, while mannitol has the least. 
It is important to monitor the fluid deficit for any of these fluid media. Due to the risk of complications from volume overload, bipolar systems were developed that are used with physiologic solutions such as sodium chloride or Ringer's lactate. These fluids are isotonic and thus carry little risk for hyponatremia. Still, while greater fluid intravasation can be tolerated, the fluid balance must be monitored when using these media. The patient will usually be under general anesthesia, although a spinal or epidural may also be used. The patient is to be put in the dorsal lithotomy position and the bladder empty before the beginning of the procedure. The cervix will then need to be dilated to about 8 millimeters in diameter or 24 French. The resectoscope should be well balanced in the dominant hand. Place the tip of the resectoscope in the cervical os while maintaining traction on the cervix using the non-dominant hand. Once the resectoscope has entered the cervix, the speculum should be removed to prevent restricting the movement of the scope. The outflow valve needs to be adjusted to allow for a clear picture. Closing the outflow valve causes the uterine cavity to distend, while opening the outflow valve allows fluid to escape the cavity and debris, bubbles, or blood to be cleared. To adequately visualize the uterine cavity, it is important to maintain a proper orientation. The camera should be held in a steady, upright position with the non-dominant hand while rotating the working element with the dominant hand. The field of view is always away from the light cord, which allows visualization of the electrode tip. To reach the patient's left lateral uterine wall, the camera in the non-dominant hand is kept steady in the upright position, and the working element in the dominant hand is rotated around its axis in a counterclockwise direction. In a similar way, to reach the right uterine wall, the camera is held steady in the upright position, and the working element is rotated in a clockwise direction. Whenever a resection is to be performed, the electrode should only be activated while retracting the loop and the loop should always be in view. Begin with the loop or other electrode fully extended, which is about 2 centimeters. Retract the loop after having entered the tissue. Before the loop is fully retracted and out of view of the camera, the entire resectoscope can be pulled back while maintaining the loop slightly extended. This will allow the loop to always be in view of the camera. Shavings need only be removed when the view is obstructed. This can be done using the loop to pin the shaving against the tip of the instrument and then either withdrawing the entire scope or just the inner element. Alternatively, polyp forceps may be used blindly to remove multiple shavings at once.